Chris Pollard scrutinizes engine debris recovered from farmland near Kegworth. Every fragment is a potential clue about what happened to British Midland Flight 92. Some bits were extremely small. It, it is actually a tribute to the quality of the search that we got as much as we did. One fragment stands out. Gotcha. It shows clear signs of metal fatigue. Because of where it was found, Pollard believes it was almost certainly the first thing to break on the 737. If we assume that the fatigue failure was the first failure, that would have lost about four inches off the end of one of the blades. The finding could explain how the engine failure began. Even one broken fan blade can disturb the flow of air through an engine, causing it to surge, a process similar to a car backfiring. What is it, the engines? The engine tries to find a new balance, and to do that, it rattles around. Be all right, man. There would have been a lot of physical vibration. The passengers reported that it was like the sound of, um, in a tumble dryer, of rocks and stuff being thrown around. It would have really been quite violent. No two fan blades are ever exactly the same. Pollard hopes a metallurgical examination will tell him which engine the weakened blade came from. Although the blades were all nominally of exactly the same alloy, there were, if you started to look in the sort of parts per million analysis of these things, there were slight differences between each blade. Pollard soon has an answer. Blade 17, left engine. The blade that broke first and caused the vibration came from the left engine. Investigators now face a troubling question. Why did the pilot shut down the right engine if the vibrations were in the left? A crew this experienced? It's hard to believe they would shut down the wrong engine. Pilots have an array of instruments that tell them about the operation of their engines, including one that measures vibration. There's another possibility. The vibration may have been so severe that it became impossible to read the shuttering gauges. Right, here are our gauges. The layout of the cockpit instruments may provide a partial explanation. Right engine. Right. Oh. See, I can see how you'd mess this up. The gauges that measure vibration sit on the right side of the panel. Under stress, the first officer may have thought they correspond to the right engine. The problem is definitely in the right engine. But the theory doesn't hold up. If the crew shut down the good right engine, why did the vibrations suddenly stop in the faulty left engine? They reduced the power on the right engine, but somehow the left engine settles down. An important piece is missing from this puzzle. 